Hey there, this is Travis, co-host of Mission Worry. Episode 6 of the podcast featured an interview with Annika Fast, who serves with Mennonite Mission Network as a specialist in church history and missiology for Francophone Africa. She and her family live in Burkina Faso. And on the podcast, she talked about how the stories we choose to tell about mission can become cemented as the history of mission. Anika approached this idea by examining the history of Mennonites in Congo. And one of the big takeaways was, in her own words, Don't look back at mission just as a powerful people, because then you miss tons of what was going on on the ground. That may have been the main story. And you miss that when you assume mission was colonialist and you only look at it through the lens of the official narratives. Now, in editing down interviews to fit into these podcast episodes, a lot of great content ends up on the cutting room floor. Stuff that's too long, too much of a narrative rabbit trail, that kind of thing. One of these cut pieces was a story that Anika told, pieced together from a young woman's letters to her family in the 1920s. It's a great example of a story that looks beyond just the powerful people and gives a glimpse into the lives of those on the ground, joining in the holy work of imagining the church together. We're excited to present this story to you as a little episode bonus in honor of Women's History Month. Here's Anika. I remember coming across um, the correspondence of Edna Kensinger, who was a young woman who just got married from North America and who was going to Congo for her first term of service with the Congo Inland Mission in 1919. And she wrote lots of letters home to her family, which by some happy chance ended up in the AIMM archives. There aren't any other letters like that in those archives. So when you read her letters, you see that she had a friendly connection and a friendly relationship with the young Congolese men who were working in her home. These were young men who were household helpers, so they were employed by her. And so there was a, clearly a power differential in that kind of situation. And I don't want to overstate this either, because I know that there was still a major power imbalance between all the North American Mennonites who were there because they were white and because they were they were not Congolese of citizenship and they were not the ones whose the Belgians were trying to extract their labor from and their time and their resources and their land. So there was always still a major power difference that makes it complex to talk about friendship. You can't just talk about friendship in a simplistic way. But one of these young men was Kazadi Mathieu, who died in 1994 after having been for many years president of the Communauté Evangelique Mennonite, or the CEM. So Kazadi Mathieu was a very respected church leader for many, many years. But when he was a young man, then he worked as a household helper for Edna Kensinger. And so her letters show that, um, that she had a friendly relationship, a friendly interest in Kazadi, and that they had fun together, they laughed together. She got up early in the morning, and with the young men, they would cook breakfast or they would cook the meals. And so she developed a kind of a rapport with these young men as members of her household in a way that you don't have an exact equivalent in North America for the kind of relationship. So I, the best word I could find was friendship, but it's not simple. It's too simple to just say that. But it was clear that Kazadi and other young men at that time who were evangelists or being tra in training to be evangelists, that they had this idea that it was really important to cross boundaries with the gospel message. Not only ethnic boundaries in the region they were in, but also to, to share this mission with their white colleagues, these missionaries who were from North America. And you can see times when Edna, through her connecting with what they were doing, kind of gave them a bit more of a voice. Sometimes her husband as well, and showing that young men like Kazadi were making an effort to have North American missionaries eat together with Congolese people at the same table. So you can see that young women 
who were working for the Congo and the mission sometimes played this kind of different role in the whole power dynamic because sometimes they were actually in the household working side by side together with young men who then became later church leaders. So I would say that like a way to tell the story of what happened is that Edna and Kazadi were knitting the body of Christ together through their interactions. And that's not to say that the white men weren't also involved in positive relationships or friendships, but there was something special about the way that was happening in a household context, in a context of sharing certain everyday routines and life together like that. <laughs>